Hi and welcome to the video. If you're watching this video shortly after its release then I hope you had a nice Christmas and I bid you a happy new year. So the subject of this video is going to be an imperial stout brew and this will be done with reiterated mashing techniques. So I would imagine that some of you are probably wondering what this reiterated mashing is all about. Well, I'm about to tell you. Reiterated mashing is basically a very very simple concept. All it basically is, is where you mash more than once. Sometimes twice, sometimes three times. I've never really known anyone do more than three, but I guess you could. This style of mashing is used to make high alcohol beers. As I'm sure everyone realizes by now once they've done a few brews, there is definitely a sweet spot in efficiency, and it's all down to the amount of grain that you have for mashing at one time. When you brew one of these higher alcohol beers, then you really have to start thinking about efficiency and the best way that you can mash. When considering this on a grain father, we have two different types of pipework to consider. When using the regular pipework, mash efficiency is best at just over 4 kilos and no more than 5 kilos. When you use the small batch pipework, this changes and the mash efficiency is best at between 2.5 to 3.5 kilos. So when I was considering this Imperial Stout Brew, I was thinking about which pipework to use for the best. Because of the high alcohol nature of this beer, I know that I will have to actually condition this for quite some time, probably about a year. This means that really I'm not going to put it into bottles because I want to speed things up. I will actually bulk condition this in a large carboy. The carboy that I actually have spare right now isn't really that large. It's about 12 litres. So I decided to do 15 litres to have some bottles spare just so I can taste it as it's moving along in time. So with a brew of this nature at 15 litres I could basically use either of the two pipeworks. But because this has 6.74 kilos of malt, it really worked out much better to use the small batch pipe work because that is within the efficiency sweet spot. And when you brew a beer of this nature, that's the main thing that you need to consider. So in conclusion, I have a 15 litre brew using 6.74 kilos of malt. This will be split into two mashes at 3.37 kilos per mash. And I've chosen to go along with the small batch pipe work because this is in the efficiency sweet spot. Now usually at this point in the video I will give you an overview of the recipe. I'm not going to do that on this one because really the video is long enough so I'm going to add that into the YouTube description. When brewing a high gravity beer such as this one you really need to be very careful about the type of yeast that you use. The reason for this is that most yeast simply will not have the tolerance to handle this type of alcohol. The alcohol will end up killing the yeast and you'll be left with a beer that um, doesn't turn out as intended. You can see here that I've decided to go with the Mangrove Jacks M42 New World Strong Ale. This will more than handle the beer that I have intended. When you're preparing a yeast for a high gravity beer it's actually a really good idea to make a starter uh, and even though when it comes to dry yeast this can be quite controversial I've always had good results doing this. So the next consideration when doing this style of mashing is what actual sparge volumes are you going to use and of course which uh, volume of strike water you're going to use. What I did here was I went to the Grainfather website and you've got those handy calculators there and I determined that uh, if I'm using a grain bill of 3.37 kilos of malt then the strike water would be 12.60 litres and the sparge volume would be 10.10 .10 litres and this would be on a 15 litre brew. So the first mash and sparge was basically business as usual. I treated it as if it was a small brew, 15 litres. I mashed in at 65 and I mashed out at 75. 
Now, one area of consideration is that obviously we're going to mash back in at 65 for the second time. So really we need to bring that water temperature down a bit. So what I did was I actually reduced the temperature down from 75 to 65 uh, on the controller. And I also sparged with some cold water as well as some 75 degree water just to help bring that temperature down a little bit further for the second mash. Now because this was a brew that I really wanted to focus on efficiency, the actual grind that I had on my grain was actually very fine. In fact, it was pretty borderline I would say, and for that reason I decided to add rice holes to the next mash. Not a lot, just a small amount just to keep it flowing. So here I am now actually doing in for the second mash. And you will notice when you stir um, a wort that already has had one mash, that the consistency is definitely different. I think you can see in this shot here how fine this grain actually has been ground. <laughs> um, stay focused. Um, by the end of the video, you'll realize that this was actually a very smart move. Okay, so we're all doughed in and ready to go now. I'm just putting the final uh, pieces together before I start the mash. Now, one thing that I did very differently in this second mash is that every 20 minutes I stopped the mash and I took off the grain plate and I gave everything a really good stir. This basically helped me increase the efficiency even further. Because there's a fair amount of intervention going on with this particular mash, I actually did all of this manually. So here's a quick recap. Both mashes are actually the same. The difference is in the second one I stirred every 20 minutes. So now it's time for our second sparge. So before we can actually calculate exactly how much we need to use here, we need to have a look at the grain father and see where the wort level is. Um, this worked out to be at about 15 litres now, so to my reckoning about three more litres and that's my pre voil volume, so I'll sparge with three litres. So how did I get to this figure? Well, I know from previous brews of 15 litres that I've had a boil off of about three litres per hour, and this will be a one hour boil. So now I need to sparge up to 18 litres, thus adding three litres of water on the sparge, giving me the pre-boil boil volume of 18 litres. By the time the boil is done, it'll be back to 15 again into the fermenter, which is what we want. So the sparge is now done, and I'm now ramping up to boil. So a little bit further ahead now, and I've put a bag over the top of the uh, mash tun here, and I'm now going to flip it into this fermenter so all of the grain ends up in the bag and then I can put it into this bigger bag. So there we are. It's now flipped over and uh, ready to pull out and give a nice clean. I find this way of getting rid of the grain very, very easy and quick and uh, very no mess. And I like that. So I've now squirted a little bit of washing up liquid into this uh, fermenter and I've um, started filling up the water and it's time to give this uh, a really good clean. It's pretty dirty now and uh, I want it obviously to be sparkling clean, ready for the next brew. When cleaning this, what I like to do is actually flip it over as well and give it a clean from the other side and um, obviously I'm not going to fill the fermenter all the way up so we have a, a full water level so um, it's a good thing to actually flip it and clean it in two parts. So I've got my hops ready for this brew and yes it's just one hop and this is the first edition for bittering and that's all it will have and I have to say that with a beer like this this won't be drunk for a year so by the time that time comes, any, any flavouring hops, late minute addition hops, anything like that, the flavours will have been gone. So it's really a waste of time adding them. So you can also see here that uh, we're almost at the boil and uh, there it is. And there's a lot of protein on the top of this one. Um, I guess that's because of the types of grain that have been used. So I'm now going to stir it back in. 
So because we have so much protein at the top here, this is actually going to take a lot longer than a regular beer to stir in. But that's okay. But I won't start the boil timer until this is all stirred back in and I add my first hop addition. So we're now ready for that first hop addition. As you can see, we've actually got a little bit more foam that's come back in the time that I've taken to actually go and get those hops. Yeah, this is a very, very protein rich beer. Because this beer is gonna be so high in alcohol, I've had to actually balance it with a lot more bittering hops just to really even things out and give it that balance that it really needs. So we're a little bit further along in the boil now and uh, periodically I'm having to check for this protein and it keeps coming up and um, you know you really have to stir it back in. This is very important for the flavour of the beer. So it's now 10 minutes before the end of the boil and I've just switched the pump on and what I'm doing now is I'm actually giving the counterflow chiller um, a treatment with the hot wall to basically sanitise it. You will find that when you start doing this, you will actually lower the temperature of the brew. Don't worry about that. As long as you get it to boil for a couple of minutes while it's doing this, then uh, that will do the job. So the reason I do this before the end is that at the very end, I'm actually going to do a whirlpool. And this is basically for quite a few different reasons. One of them being that um, obviously we want all of the flavours and everything that's gone into this to actually be amalgamated together. And the best way to do this is to give everything a really good stir. But the other reason is that, say for example you have a lot of hops in your brew, then uh, this is a way of actually getting them all into the centre of the, of the system. So you can see here that I'm actually using uh, a normal brewing spoon. This is stainless steel and I'm giving it as fast a stir as I possibly can. What actually works more efficiently is to use a drill and uh, a drill bed at the end. Uh, obviously you need to be careful of what material that's made of. Um, and then you can do this far quicker, more efficiently and less effort. But here I am and I'm just working it. And really, for the best effect, you want to do this for about five minutes. After you've finished that whirlpooling, and say for example you have a lot of different uh, hops that have gone into your brew, then it's a good idea to let it settle then for about five minutes before you switch on your pump. In the case of this brew, I didn't have any problems with clogging. There weren't actually that many hops that went into this, of course, just one addition. And I've started the uh, cooling process now. And very quickly, as we're used to with this uh, counterflow chilling method, the uh, temperature is uh, being reduced nicely down very, very quickly. So it's now time to put everything in place and start putting this wall into my fermenter. And you can see here that I've got a little hook up here going from the ceiling, just so that I can uh, hands-free put this wall into the fermenter and obviously introduce as much oxygen into it as possible during that process. I find that this works very well and you can see that even though we've only just started there's a nice amount of bubbling going on in the wall kit. So I set this recipe up with a brew house efficiency target of 75% which I thought would be um, yeah, easily achievable. What I didn't realise was that um, the way that I've done this has actually given me a far greater efficiency. What I actually have here is a gravity um, of 1120, which gives me a brew house efficiency of 93.5%. Yeah, I'm very, very happy with that, but how did I get to it? Well, first and foremost, what I had was a very, very fine grain crush. This crush did give me a small amount of problems during the sparge, but they were easily cured. And this crush was very similar to what you would use in commercial brewing. Grain crush is actually the most vital part of this high efficiency brewing. The grain father has excellent recirculation, which is done via the pump. But you can increase your efficiency even further by doing manual stirring every 20 minutes during the mash. This actually allowed me to go even higher with the efficiency. 
And then lastly, but by no means least, a good, even, slow sparge. Very, very important. You will simply pick up more sugars this way. If you really want high efficiency brewing, sparge is an area that those that do things in a more uh, lazy way, less hands-on, you will benefit further from a slow, even sparge. By hand. Yep, I know. But you've got to do it. So the end result of this method, assuming that the um, finishing gravity is as Beersmith has predicted, is that from a 6.74 kilo grain bill, I now have a 13.5% beer. So yeah, I'm very, very happy with that. I'm happy to confirm that fermentation started on this one very, very quickly, within the hour of pitching the yeast. But here's some uh, footage from the next day. And you can see here that uh, I'm not using a standard airlock for this one. It would be simply too violent. Um, so I've got here a blow-off valve. I would recommend using this for any stout, to be quite honest. They can be very explosive, particularly a high-gravity one. So here's the scene a little bit later on that day. And you can see the Crawson is trying to escape, and we've got a jacuzzi. So I hope you uh, found this video very useful and enjoyable. And uh, I've got to say that I had a lot of fun myself, so um, give this a go. So if you did like this video, then please do go ahead and like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I've got a lot of videos in the pipeline for the future, so if you're interested in uh, seeing what I've got coming up, then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I've covered in this video, or in others, or anything in to do with brewing in general, then please do not hesitate to get in touch. I'm more than happy to help. Until then, happy brewing!